So today we start part C of module one, calculate manufacturing cost. Part C point one, principle of learning curve. Yeah. All right, so let's start. So this topic, we need to do calculation. Yeah. Before that, let's look at a principle of learning curve. So we know the learning curve, right? But here, the meaning of the learning curve is for the manufacturing industry. Special meaning. Yeah. So not our usual learning curve. Yeah. All right. But closely related. So manufacturing learning curve. What's that? Yeah. The cost of manufactured component, a uh, computer component. Actually, although here we talk about computer component, but this principle can be generalized to other products also. Yeah. All right. So decreases over time. Yeah. So that's based on our understanding. Decreases the cost. Decreases over time. Even. Yeah. So the part is this even part. Even without major improvements in ba the basic implementation technology. Yeah. So that's the, you know, you're learning to do something. So you're learning to manufacture some very sophisticated hardware product. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of things to learn. Learning. It's a long period. Learning time. In that period, so you keep improve, improving your technology, so you reduce the manufacturing cost, even without big technology improvement. Even without big, important big technology improvement, you can still keep reducing, but definitely, if you have some breakthrough technology, you can reduce the cost even bigger Possibly, yeah, could be, you know, cost could be higher if some technology, yeah, sometimes advanced technology may bring the cost up a little bit. That could happen sometimes. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Here, I use this picture so you can understand. Yeah. So here, let us assume there is no major technology improvement. Yeah. But when the manufacturing process developed and improved, keep improving, yeah. fine tune here and there. So improve here, there, in a lot of places to make it better, right? Yeah. So the cost reduced going down. Yeah. But you may not be able to reduce indefinitely, infinitely, right? Infinite. You know, yeah. At some point, it will be flat, right? See, the curve will be very flat. Very flat. Okay? Yeah. So you can imagine. So that's the key observation in manufacturing industry. So principle of learning curve. Yeah. All right. Measuring learning curve. How to measure? How do you know the cost reduced, right? Yeah. Although you can use, or you can use cost directly. <laughs> cost, that's a direct measure. Yeah. But in transistor, or integrated circuit industry, IC industry, integrated circuit industry, another commonly used measure. So th that's the yield. I talked about yield in a previous video, right? The ratio, you know, good microchips over the number of good microchips over all the microchips produced from the wafers, yeah. So we will see that more 
much more later. Yeah. So learning curve itself is best measured by change in yield. Yeah. So in that IC industry, this is the most important measure for the learning curve. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. The yield, yeah, so here the definition. Yeah, I repeat another time. The percentage of manufactured devices. Okay, yeah, that survives the testing procedure. Remember, so I show you a picture doing testing, right? For each die on the wafer, so there is a special equipment doing the testing. So pass the testing procedure survives, then it's a good die. If it's a good die, so then all right, we calculate the percentage. That's the yield. Yeah. All right. Here, so look in this picture you can see yield is very important. So in business, so in IC industry, you know. All those technicians, they always they focus on this yield number, the most important number. They are look at, okay? They are looking at yeah, yield number. Yeah. So here you see, so yield is money. Yeah. Okay. One percent yield improvement in high volume production equals ten million dollars of our bottom line. Yeah. So here you can see. Even one percent yield improvement, it could be really big because the bottom. So look at the number of microchips, microprocessors produced each year. That bottom. So look at that. So one percent. How big is that one percent? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Next. So manufacturers are typically secretive, yeah, because this number is secret for a company, yeah, for a manufacturing that company, it's a top secret, top secret, because your opponent, if your opponent knows that number, so they can set their strategy, you know. They can do the business in different ways. You know, they try to beat you. So, the yield number is highly secreted. Highly secret. Yeah. All right. About their yields, but it can be as low as thirty percent. Yeah. At the beginning, especially when you develop. A, you know, new technology at the beginning, the yield is very low. Okay, so that's this part. This part, the yield very low. The yield is low. That means the cost is high. The cost is really high. So here you see the cost, but the yield is as low as thirty percent. Thirty percent, extremely low. But still, you have thirty percent. So. It's possible some other companies could have even lower than thirty percent. Also possible. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here, let me give you an example, concrete real world example. In December two thousand nineteen, just less than two years ago, December. Yeah. A little more than one year. Yeah. TSMC. This company is a very famous top IC manufacturer, Taiwan company, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturer Company, TSMC, the top one. Currently, they have the most advanced technology, comparing with Intel, comparing with Samsung, TSMC. They are the best. Okay, all right. So TSMC announced an average yield of eighty percent. Eighty percent. So that that's not bad. 
that's pretty good, but still there is some room to improve. There is a lot of room to improve because look at this, even one percent improvement that's huge. One percent improvement, so that's really a big number, a big improvement. Yeah. All right. So let's look at the next topic. More details. Yeah. We want to look at the device yield. We need to prepare for the calculation. Yeah. In our second video, for this part, we will start calculation. The formulas first. Here we still do preparation. Yeah. So we try to understand a little more background. So here we need some background device yield. Here, let's look at two different device yields. The first one, wafer yield. Wafer has a yield. Okay? Yeah. The meaning, yeah. wafer fabrication yield is defined as the ratio of the total number of wafers that come out of the fab, out of the fab. Or, in other words, they are good wafers. They can be used to produce microchips, good dyes. Okay? So those wafers that can be used, those wafers, to the total number of wafers that were started in the fab, the total number of wafers, because some of the wafers have to be thrown away because they are bad. Okay? Yeah. So th there are a small number of wafers they could be thrown away. Yeah. Usually that number is very small. Okay? Yeah. But there is a wafer yield number. Okay? Yeah. That yield number very close to 100%, but not exactly 100%. Yeah. All right. So that's the first uh, device yield number. Second, die yield. So that's the one we really want to have this number, the most important number, die yield, most important number. Secretive, remember that's secretive for those companies. So this one, this number, this die yield number. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> die yield is the number of working chips, good chips working, good microchips, okay, working chips on a wafer, yeah. given in percentage, yeah. we use percentage to measure it, okay, yeah, since the number of chips on a wafer die per wafer, so later we will use this DPW, die per wafer, okay, yeah, can vary depending on the chip size, the chips, you know, each chip may have different size, okay, yeah, chip size, and also wafer's diameter, wafer's, you know, 300 millimeters, 10, 200 millimeters, and the new underdeveloping technology, 450 millimeters, okay? Yeah, those factors will, you know, change that die per wafer quantity yeah all right so here let me show you some picture so you get an idea yeah so this picture look at this we need to cut dyes from a wafer okay yeah so when we do the cutting you can see the results so we will get different dyes yeah all right so first black dots defect that can be detected. Some special device, yeah. special device, can detect a defect. Yeah. Then the dye affected by that particular defect cannot be used; has to be thrown away. Yeah. Defect. Yeah. So that those dyes got affected, Def defective dye. Okay. So the Red dyes, you see in the pictures, red dyes, yeah. 
cannot be used. Yeah. And partial edge dye. Some dyes near the edge of the wafer, yeah. so they're not complete dyes, partial. Yeah. Cutting off, yeah. partial, not a complete dye. So those partial dyes cannot be used. How can you use that kind of dye to produce a computer? Nobody wants to buy that computer, right? <laughs> Using partial dye. How can how can can you buy it, right? Yeah. So throw away, also throw away. Yeah. Then the last type, green one, good dye. So that's the most important thing we like to have. Yeah. Good dyes. All those green good dyes. Yeah. All right. So here I also want to show you another picture. Yeah. This picture is from that early TSMC dye yield. Yeah. So actually the dye yield they develop for the most advanced, currently most advanced manufacturing technology, 5 nm, 5 nanometers technology. So when they develop that, at the beginning, the yield is was very low. The yield was extremely low because you know, you know that learning curve, right? That learning curve. At the beginning, a lot of things you do not know how to do it, or how to do those things well. You do not know. Okay, so you need to long time experiments, improvements, a lot of hard work, build up. Okay, so here from this picture, you can look at the the, the special numbers. Yeah, let me. Just to read the numbers. First, max dyes per wafer, that number, 577. The total wafer only produced that 577. All dyes, all the dyes. Okay, yeah. Then, defective dyes, 392. 392 defective. Dies, they cannot be used, thrown away. Okay, yeah. All right. And good dies, remaining good dies, 185. That small number, 185. Total number of dies, 577. You take the ratio. <laughs> so you can get die yield. That's the die yield. So you get that number here. Let me read that number out. 32.04 percent. 32 point 30 something, right? Yeah, as low as 30 percent. Less than one third. You can see that yield less than one third. So that is the early TSMC die yield. So now they get above 80 percent. Yeah, so they claim you know above 80 percent. So you can see, you know, big improvement, long learning curve. They went through. Yeah, now they are the, they are on top. Yeah, five nanometer technology. You know, now they are on top, top of it. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me stop this first video. Yeah. The second one, we need to learn formulas. And then after that, we will do a lot of computation. Yeah. All right.